This is the Sony FX3, which despite being a few years old, remains one of the best cinema cameras for the money. One of the things that makes the FX3 or FX30 so popular is that you can rig it out into any number of combinations. But all of these rig builds are missing something until now. I'd like to introduce you to the new and improved ultimate rig for the Sony FX3, turning it from a beast into a true cinema camera workhorse. Today, I want to show you how I rig out either the Sony FX3 or FX30 and why you should do the same. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get started with the build, I want to lay some principles for how I came up with this design for the rig. I've had multiple iterations of my rig over the years, and I wanna help you learn from some of my growing pains along the way. It needs to be functional, modular, and incredibly sturdy. I should never accidentally run out of battery. It should sit flush on a flat surface. I should be able to break it down without the use of any tools. And I need a solution for vertical shooting. And it had better look clean as hell. None of this like Franken rig with cables dangling all over the place. Crafting with these principles in mind has made this rig nearly perfect but I'll mention those drawbacks in just a second. I'll also note that everything I talk about is going to be linked in the description. And while I'm using an FX3, just know that anything is fully interchangeable with the FX30. So if you wanna pay half the price of the FX3 with the FX30, go ahead, be my guest. At the core of the rig is the small rig cage. There's a lot of cages out there, but I've gone with the small rig one because it gives the most modularity. It gives access to all the FX3's buttons. None of the tally lights are blocked. And of all the cages that I've tried, it actually fits best in the hand when you're operating the main grip of the camera. We're also going to install the top NATO rail, which will become very obvious in just a second. This cage lives on my FX3 at all times. Okay, so the true MVP of this rig is the Cineback. This is from Caleb Pike's Camera Foundry. It's basically two cheese plates, a V-mount plate, and a D-tap connection all combined within a 3D printed enclosure. To install it, you just attach the provided quarter 20 to 3 8 inch adapter on the bottom of the small rig cage. You open up the FX3's flip screen and then install the two included screws on the top of the NATO handle. And then you do one final screw into the bottom where you installed that 3 8 adapter. Now that it's on, you can see that we basically have a nice slot for the flip screen to safely tuck away and serve as a little control module while still being able to easily access it. It basically becomes a little powerhouse brick similar to the body of like an FX6 or a red Komodo. You can also still access all of the buttons, controls, and the grip on the right side. And if you slide your finger under that top cheese plate, you can still access the power switch, the menu button, and the mode buttons as well. Most other rigs require you to use rods and complicated base, base plates in order to attach your V-mount. And you end up with this super tall or lopsided monstrosity with a huge gap between the camera and your battery with cables dangling all over the place. Instead, everything is powered with a single V-mount battery. So you'll be able to pop it on the back and then that routes to a D-tap splitter which is controlled by a little power switch on the left side of the rig. That means that when powered off, there's actually zero power draw from that D-tap splitter. I cannot stress enough how incredible this is. Normally, when you have all of your peripherals connected to a V-mount, they're drawing some amount of power even when they are powered off, meaning it's common to run into a scenario where you pick up your camera to shoot and you realize that your V-mount is drained. But with the Cineback, you can quickly flip the power switch to power up everything that's connected to that D-tap splitter. Once you're done, you flip off that switch and it powers down with no drain on the V-mount battery. For my V-mount, I'm using the Small Rig V99 Pro. In my experience, this is probably the best V-mount battery on the market right now. It's sleek as hell, it charges with USB-C, and has a really high quality LED display, and it also has a ton of IO for powering anything you can think of. But to be fair, for this particular rig, we don't really need all of those bells and whistles, since we're not actually going to be connecting anything to the V-mount itself. You could go with the slightly cheaper Small Rig V99 instead, or any number of the smaller, cheaper V-mount batteries out there, and I'll link to a few other options in the description as well. Okay, so a major change from my previous rig builds is the top handle. I used to use the Small rig wooden NATO handle, and while I do still really like that option, you'll see quickly why I made the switch. 
To mount the top handle, I've mounted a NATO rail to the center of the top cheese plate. The location of this NATO rail not only helps for the balancing once the lens is attached, but it also leaves the mounting screws for the cine back uncovered. So that way I can quickly take off the cine back entirely if I need to sling down the rig at any point. The handle I'm using now is the Condor Blue NATO handle with remote trigger. This allows you to start and stop recording without ever taking your hand off the top handle, which is the main reason I'm choosing this one over the wooden NATO of my previous builds. On the front side of the top handle is where I've mounted my monitor. I have this Condor Blue monitor mount that uses a 3 8 inch with Ari pin on one side and then a NATO clamp on the other. So I'll just thread that mount onto the front of the handle and then lock it into place. And then I use this Condor Blue monitor NATO rail to attach the monitor to the handle itself. It comes with these really cool little inserts that prevent the rail from ever coming loose. Because again, ensuring that everything is perfectly solid is one of the core tenants of this build. But you're still able to use that NATO rail to quickly remove the monitor to pack down the rig. From my previous rigs, I've also made an update to my monitor. I'm now using the Hollyland Mars M1 Enhanced, which I've chosen for three reasons. First, it's got a thousand nits brightness, allowing for monitoring even outdoors. Second, it also has one of the better UIs of any of the monitors that I've personally tested. It has all the features that you would want from a monitor these days, like waveforms and peaking and false color and anamorphic D-squeeze but it's also still super simple to use. I also really like the way that it displays aspect markers. I almost always have mine set to a nine by 16 aspect ratio with about a 70% transparency on the sides. This makes it super easy for me to film horizontal, but frame for vertical use as well, which is almost becoming table stakes in today's social media fueled environment. And lastly, you'll also notice these little antenna on the top of the monitor. Well, that's because this monitor is also a transmitter receiver built in. This means that you can get two of these monitors and set one on the rig for transmitting and then another one somewhere else for receiving, which basically makes this a super seamless director's monitor for whenever you have a client on set or if you wanna just film yourself. I do have two qualms with this monitor, however. The first of which is that there's no vertical or horizontal flip, just a 180 degree rotation, meaning that if you wanna turn this around to film yourself, it'll be mirrored. I've reached out to Hollyland to see if they could adjust this with like a firmware setting, so, Hopefully that is something that they will be able to fix. The other issue is that to turn on the power, you have to press the power button. In most instances, this is a non-issue, but when you're using the Cineback, it would be awesome to have the monitor be powered by a power switch that could just be left in the on position. Like I have this port keys monitor that uses a switch. So once I power on the Cineback, the monitor immediately powers on as well. So yeah, I'll link to both in the description and maybe you have a different monitor that you really like and you can let me know in the comments. On the left side of the rig, I use the small rig wooden NATO handle, which is attached directly to the small rig cage itself. It's super small, lightweight, and it provides an excellent third handle option. So you have a bunch of different configurations for the FX3 or FX30. With the added weight of the Cineback, you really get that nice heavy cinema camera handheld look that's kind of hard to replicate otherwise. For lenses, I'm almost always using either the Sony 24 to 70 or 16 to 35 G Master Mark IIs. And then for a filter system, I'm usually using the Polar Pro Helix Maglock system. In the past, I was using the Recon system from Polar Pro since it has the matte box, but honestly, it's just so hard to beat the ease of use of the Helix Maglocks. And since I'm also a photo shooter, I just wanna be able to use that Helix system to swap all of my filters across all my lenses and use it for both photo and video really easily. To power the camera, I'm using the Condor Blue D-Tap to dummy battery. You slot the dummy battery into the battery compartment, and then technically you can remove the battery door, but I'm personally too worried that I'm gonna lose it and I wanna be able to quickly break it down and use the FX3 on its own if needed. So instead, I just close this little door on the small rig cage, and it ends up perfectly keeping the battery door flushed with the box bottom of the rig. Now, a huge word of warning. If you have the latest firmware update, so 4.0 on the FX3, or I believe it's 3.0 on the FX30, when you power on the Cineback, you're going to get Sony's dreaded 
battery safety warning. Sony has long been very annoying about the use of third-party batteries. The tin hat wearing among us will say that it's to force you to buy their overpriced batteries. Or those with a little bit better understanding of how like electronics work, they'll say that third-party dummy batteries can cause damage to your camera. This warning does not display on older firmware versions, but once you do update it, it does appear. So I'd maybe advise against updating your firmware. Now, my understanding is that the combination of the Cineback and the Condor Blue cable takes the voltage from the V-mount and drops it down to what the camera needs. So you should be safe, but maybe y'all can argue about it down in the comments. And while you're down there, you should check to make sure that you're already subscribed. To power the monitor, I'm using a Condor Blue DTAP to DC connection, and then the monitor is connected to the camera with a right angle HDMI cable, also from Condor Blue. There's obviously tons of other options out there, but Condor Blue makes some really great stuff, and I kind of do dig the blue accents. Now, cable management was a huge focus of this build, and the Cineback makes it super easy. There's this little plate that can be removed on the right side of the rig. So what I've done is I route my DTAP cables through there and then you reattach that plate so that they're all contained and secure and out of the way. I also have two Mondo ties, one for the monitor cables and then the other attached to the top of the rig to hold the shutter cable. The combo means that all the cables are pretty much locked into place. And then when I break down the rig, I can keep the Cineback and the cables connected to the core rig. So all I need to do is detach the handles, detach the V-mount, and just kind of tuck it all away without the use of any tools since everything is on a NATO rail. Okay, so we're obviously missing one thing, audio. I'll be the first to admit that this is one area where this rig probably struggles the most. Most of my audio is recorded externally, like what you're hearing right now, but you can easily add a shotgun mic to the side handle. My other solution is to use the wireless audio setup. There's literally hundreds of these out there, Rode, DJI, Deity, Hollyland, or any number of the cheap Amazon knockoffs out there. So take your pick. Obviously the ideal scenario would be to make use of Sony's XLR top handle, which in this current iteration of the Cineback is not possible. But I did speak with Caleb and of course he's already working on a solve for this. So we should see an XLR solution for the Cineback in the very near future. Once we have this core rig put together, we can very easily add and subtract as needed. We have two additional DTAP ports and literally dozens of mounting points. So whether you need to add a follow focus or rods or any other peripheral your heart desires, you've got it. I'm super curious to know what you'd maybe change about this rig. So let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.